Hi there fellow movie lovers, horror freaks and YouTubers. Welcome back to another heavy metal really video. I thought it was about time that we uh, catch up a little bit uh, with what, what's been going on in my life and what I've been doing. Uh, uh, it took way too long to make another video. Uh, yeah, as usual, you know, stuff in life just eats up your time. Uh, been sick a lot. Uh, this cup, the first couple of months this year, uh, unfortunately, uh, but I feel much better now. <laughs> so, um, uh, and yeah, and I actually have loads of stuff to update, loads of new movies, loads of new stuff to talk about. Uh, first one that I need to talk about is that we, right now, this is the last day, but right now there's a craft uh, convention going on here, and I did a poster art for it. I just finished it this week. This is it. Uh, I also designed the logo for it and such, but I did this. Uh, and I had to sacrifice a lot to do this. I had to work overtime. Uh, overtime and work till my arm, till my hand and arm hurt and my eyes was bursting out of my skull. <laughs> and I have the proof to show it. And I will, I will show you the footage now. Well, this is what happens when you work too many hours straight by the computer. Well, here I am working along on a poster for um, a convention, a craft convention that we have here in my hometown of Åsene. So this is, I've done it three times before I've done posters for that. No, no. This is the third time, but I'm working on that and I, I have very little time, so I, I don't know how this will turn out. But hopefully it will turn out all right, you know, it, it, yeah, it's looking good right now, not, not like that, but I, I just have so little time to do it, you know, I'm really I'm feeling the stress right now and it's not good. Uh, but uh, well, you know, I have to do it a convention for craft. You know, different different types of craft, rugs and uh, threads and woodworks and paintings and all of that stuff. That's why I think this is, I mean, this is a craft in itself, so why not have a craft, an artwork for the convention, you know, like I did the other times. So, uh, well, we'll see. I have a lot of work to do. This will, this will take some time. Oh man, I really need to push here, and I'm really not ready for that, but, you know, I have to do it. But my health, you know, my health always takes a nosedive when I do stuff like this. I mean, always. It's, I mean, this needs to be done. This should have been done already. But I started today on it. I sketched it up yesterday evening and I started working on it today. And that's the only time I could get to it. You know, it's the, I, you know, so it is what it is. But, but I'm happy with the way it's going at least. But it, see, it's, Loads of more detailed works and all, all of that stuff. I really want to design this. I can't spend too much time on it, I know that, but I really need it to look a certain way. Yeah, this is something that I would like to design and, and make myself, you know, stuff like this for real models and such. It sound, might sound weird, but I want to design stuff, I want to build stuff. And that's like the stuff down here is really something I would like to design. And, have someone wear for real in a movie or whatever or for just a photo shoot or something like that I would love to do that I have more ideas for stuff like that and that I want to do but I, but I like that stuff so I'm working overtime and I'm working from home it's Sunday but if I don't work overtime on this artwork during my own time then I, it will not be done in well it will be not 
will not be done in time. I mean, next week, and I mean, early next week, and I need to have it printed and and such, so, and done, so we can use it. So, I still have stuff to do on it, you know, s small details that need to f fill, be filled out, and, you know, oh, you see here, I just, this is still the old sketches underneath here, you can see it, I still have lots of that stuff to clean up and fix and paint, you know, but i come a long way since since the last time, I mean, it's starting to look, you know, if I push today a couple of more hours, and and tomorrow then it will be done in time you can only cut as many corners before i mean uh, before it starts to look bad and you know but i really need to work more hours today at least a couple of more uh, yeah but i designed this this poster for the craft uh, convention thing that they have during town winter town fair here where i live so i also designed a logo up there uh, yeah. Um, I'm putting in some more hours. It's still Sunday, but I, I already put in four hours uh, earlier. Now I'm putting in another, I don't know, three maybe. I think that would be enough. I don't have to work on all little details, but you know, it has to look good at least. You know, it has to look acceptable uh, I need to continue on working on this little fox here sitting on her shoulder uh, at least so that I'm happy enough uh, I mean, I'm happy enough, but until it looks good enough, because uh, uh, there are still stuff that needs to be worked on with it. Uh, uh, yeah, now, now we're getting there. Now I'm starting to get. The fur feeling there, and it, like there's a bit of light. Yeah, now, now we're getting there. This, I mean, it takes time to to build up fur, a feeling of fur, and I mean, so time that I don't have, I would like to spend, you know, time doing. It really makes a difference if you start working on something and you it's there because you're going to build on it and you start halfway then it's not going to look that good you know like if you have started to paint fox fur and you don't have any shadows or or different colors to lift it up you know or like the, the lighting reflecting of the fur and such then you know then it's going go, it's going to look flat not only flat it's not going to look good you can't start building on things and then, then, like, stop midway. I mean, uh, I don't like that. So, uh, anyway, you know, at least only if you can, like, hint on it and make simple, simple uh, line works and such that that's, that makes an effect and it will work. Now, I think I'm starting to, to spend too much time on this. So I'm going to move on. I'm going to go back to that and just do some, a quick quick thing on it because I don't want uh, these uh, line works there and not that it matter I mean it does gives give it something but since I don't have it in many other places I don't think I want it on the Fox I think I need to I want to remove this and you know keep it it doesn't matter if it's in some places I mean it, it actually adds something to it but there are places I don't want it to. It looks too messy, you know, too messy. You, so you gotta remove parts of it. Then uh, I mean, it's still an artwork, and you should feel like it's an artwork. So a little of it doesn't matter. But the the fox is starting to look good, you know. But you can't really see, can you? Uh, can't really see it too well. But anyway, it's starting to it look better. 
I wish you could really see it the way I, I see it, but, but there's a, a fair amount of details that is vanishing in the, this ca camera. I can see it and due to the screen, me filming the screen and such. Uh, so you can't see subtle <laughs> changes in in color in colors, you know. Uh, that really makes a difference. But it, you know, it's it's I'm I'm, I'm happy with the groundwork there. And I'm starting to keep on pushing. I got some to do on her face, and some detail works here, and uh, fair a uh, little bit on their top there, and then I got yeah uh, down here. I got still his her dress here, the, the, the dress that is behind her ha arms and hands. I need to paint that. That's one of the main important thing that I need to tackle. So still have that, and then, then it's just like, f f yeah, I'm going to, yeah, I forgot about that. I'm going to do some thread work here, some uh, design that's been sewn, and then a, a, a needle coming up here with a piece of thread hanging down here. So I have that to deal with, uh, but I could possibly do that tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, I got another hour or so that I want to push a little bit more one hour and one and a half or what whatever uh, but I think that would be enough uh, well, here I am again and I'm just doing a final uh, uh, <clears throat> look over of the artwork just fixing some minor stuff uh, but then I'm done I'm just wanna like correct some small flaws I, I've done this in record speed I mean I've never done such an artwork in this amount of time I mean I really broke some personal records here and what I've been doing has been paying off you know cutting down time and such and you know and the quality is it's all right I mean yeah it's all right pushed some extra hours yesterday uh, worked on this a little bit worked on the uh, spinning wheel it's looking a whole lot better Worked on that a bunch. Uh, still not happy with parts of it, but it's it's all right. It looks. I don't have more time. I need really need to, like, yeah. Uh, print it out today as quickly as possible. Otherwise, I mean, I would like to work more on that here. You know, what's supposed to be like that. I, I'm going to fill out some red and such, but. Well, anyway, that's it. It's uh, well, pretty much done. I've been working so my eyes burn and my hands hurt, and yeah, but that's it. Just going to do some color corrections, maybe, and you know, well, let's see. Well, that's it. I'm almost done. This is the last hour or so that I do some corrections and then then it's to the printers uh, yeah yeah that's it <laughs> but anyway i'm happy with how it turned out uh, even if i had to cut a lot of corners and such and I uh, there are small details that irritate me but I, as I always that's, that's the nature of being an artist and doing artworks like this but this is the post artwork for this the craft convention the craft uh, yeah of two thousand the craft convention of 2019 <laughs> so yeah uh, yeah so that's it that's what I've been doing this week and started in the end of last week uh well worked hard um 
been doing other stuff as well. Uh, then another old thing that I want to just touch a little bit on is my comic book that I've been working on on and off. But it, it really goes slowly and I've been rewriting my my storyboard and redoing things and you know it's where it go, it's going slowly it's certainly not my top priority but I want to show you and I have it down here I have uh, let's see I moved that but I want to show you at least the first the first the first page of Gore Lover I don't know if you can see it very well but I will probably insert a uh, uh, a closer up look at it, a POV shot. But that's the first page of Gore, the Gore Lover comic. Uh, the name might change, I might change it to something else. I have another name in mind, but I'm not totally sold on it. I like Gore Lover, but I, I am not sure that it reflects entirely uh, the complex story and, and what it's really is about because it's a, a little bit deeper. I mean, it's not your ordinary hack and slash bullshit boring pointless boring artwork with tons of gore that makes no sense and and, and you know has bad pacing I mean, there's a ton of those comic books out there in the US but they are really bad really really bad and they have you know sure they have gory artworks here and there but there's just, you know it's so f fragmented and disconnected and I and this, like the story, the story is not good. There's barely any story, and this actually has a story, and um, yeah, and there's a point to it. So it's not just your meaningless fucking gore fest. Even though I want to have gore in it, of course there are gore in it already, and other weird stuff. But it's more than just like a gore comic. I mean, the gore is, it's in there, but it's not. That's why I think that maybe the name will be misguiding to some people. I don't want that, but I want to concentrate on great characters and a great story. You know, and good design and good layout, good pacing, uh, you know. Yeah, so I've been really... But I've been working hard on this on and off, but I'm back working hard on it right now. But it's, not, it's certainly not my priority. I do, I do something here and there. Uh, yeah. But that's it, Gore Lover, my Gore Lover comic. So yeah, been working on my Gore Lover comic on and off. Uh, yeah, and I was going to tell you about this, but I have another project that I've been working on besides my movie. That that actually is. Where do I have it? I'll be right back. Here we go. This is actually another project of mine, uh, and I can actually show you like a. Uh, an illustrated uh, like this is the first sort of test thing this this is a rework of an old comic that I had that I called the uh, Night of the Pumpkins this was a long time ago that I started this I did uh, well I did a storyboard for it and I did the first five pages I inked and and uh, did the first five pages it, those first pages was finished but I wasn't happy with the rest of the story I could not go on but I saved the stuff, I saved the storyboard, I saved the, the, the artworks and such. But I, because I thought I would revisit it and rework it, and I have. This is my new design of the character uh, for the comic book. And I've been working on that. And I'm working ho really hard on the storyboard and, uh, and, uh, and script for the new comic book. And I actually have done a lot of work and I do it at every break I get at work I try to do as much I can on the storyboard and script I write so I write what the characters are going to say and what's going to happen and all that but I do it at the same time so but I actually have here about 140 or so pages could be a little bit less but almost 140 pages of storyboard and script that's what I got here in my hand 140 pages plus side notes and plus uh, character designs and such that I do. Uh, yeah. So this is for my rework of the old story called Night of the Pumpkins, which I re later reworked to a to 
to a story called uh, the, I renamed it to Pumpkins 13, but I wasn't happy with that either. And now I renamed it again, and I reworked it, and I redid the whole story, and I'm happy, and I'm actually continuing on. It's a whole co connected storyboard. Uh, everything is. It's, I don't jump anything, which I usually do. Sometimes I come up with stuff and then I jump and I come up with other stuff that, that are further along. You know, I can't help it. It just happens. But this time along, I actually just did it straight in a row. All the happenings and all the all the things that, that is going to happen in the comic book uh, slash graphic novel. So this is this is one of my new, new old projects, reworking an old comic. So yeah, but uh, I'm really happy with the new design of the character. It works a lot better than the old. And uh, yeah, works a whole lot better. So that's some of the stuff that I've been working on. I've been working on the movie with small stuff, you know, here and there. I, I'm not working my ass off, but it might seem like it. I'm just managing my time, doing a little bit here and there. And if you do a little bit here and there, you will be amazed at how much you can accomplish. Even though, yes, this is just a script storyboard, but do you know in the past how hard it was for me just to find time to do stuff like that? Very hard. It's still hard to... to I don't own, own all of my own time. I, I mean, you could argue that we all do, but then we look at life and we see all the things that we, that we have to do and, the, the, you know the systems that are built up around us that we have to follow and work and the demands from other people and all that bullshit you know there isn't enough time to do what you need to do or want to do uh, so you gotta figure things out make systems and try to make it work uh, but anyway some of the stuff that i've been uh, working on uh, we're also working on my movie and next week i will do some real work on that uh, we're not filmed but i will build some stuff but anyway yeah that's it for some of the stuff i have loads of more to tell but you know it's so much uh, so well let's get back to the good old heavy metal real uh, update uh, stuff instead because i got some <laughs> a backlog of stuff to update uh, for you guys some movies and such and i'm going to start with something that goes way way back actually to last year's summer of town fair in July. I never did update those movies that I picked up. I got a whole stack of VHS tapes that I picked up then and a whole bunch of Blu-rays and DVDs. I went a little bit crazy and overboard. And we're going to update now. We're going to I'm going to show you the stuff that I picked up at Town Fair. So here we go. We're going to take a look at what I picked up during town fair back in July of 2018 and we got this stack right here the new middle one here all the bunch down there there's a whole bunch of VHS that I picked up as well so I'm going to go through that but first of all we're going to go go through the blu-rays or some of the blu-rays and I went a little bit crazy I went 88 films crazy and yes I picked up a bunch of stuff that I've been wanting Oh, my, oh yeah, it's a little bit dusty. That damn it! I need to fucking, I need to fire the maid, the cleaning maid. She she doesn't have a job in the anymore. Or maybe I'll put her in my dungeon, so I can torture her. No, I'm not. Like I, I was gonna keep on torturing myself instead. You know, as usual. The torture never stops. Well, let's <laughs> move on. Well, anyway, uh, 88 films. I went 88 films crazy. And uh, first of all, I picked up In the Eye of the Hurricane, also known as... Uh, what's this one called? The f Blue uh, Velvet... F f what was it? Velvet Fox or whatever. The Fox with a Velvet Tail. Yeah, the Fox with a Velvet Tail. So yeah, I picked this one up uh, during Town Fair, In the Eye of the Hurricane. And unfortunately... I dropped it so the case doesn't shut. It broke off the hinge, uh, the you know the closing plastic parts of it, the locking parts of the plastic. So yeah, I can't close it. So I need to exchange the case. I hate when that happens. Uh, but they don't do, do sturdy cases as they used to. I mean, you could drop them from the Eiffel Tower and uh, they would still be whole. <laughs> but in the eye of the hurricane, happy with that one. Uh, yeah, and let's move on. 
uh, picked up that, this one as well. The perfume of a lady in black. Yeah. The perfume of the lady in black. Yeah, way happy to have this one. Uh, yeah. You know, these Italian classics, they, uh, well, maybe some of them aren't, but in my mind, all of them are. I mean, I love it, Italian movies, Italian horror, Italian experimental stuff, Italian spaghetti western giallo horror. You know, I love it. I love it. The more experimental and artistic it is, the better. Uh, usually, that's the way I feel, at least. Uh, Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eye. I did not have the DVD of it. I never uh, could pick up the Blue, Blue Underground release of it. So, I finally have it, but I have the 88 Films Blu-ray instead. So, yeah. Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eye. I mean, I haven't seen this in ages. I, so I don't really remember. I never saw the whole movie. I saw parts of it as well. Uh, I think. I, yeah, I don't remember. But I have definitely seen many parts of this movie. So, Seven Deaths in a Cat's Eye, and finally, finally I can re-watch it in Blu-ray. So, yeah. Uh, Delirium. Uh, also called The Focus of Goya or whatever it was. I don't remember. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Fucking Delirium. Lombardo Bava. Lombardo Bava. Hmm. Great stuff. Hey. Delirium. <laughs> oh, here we got another one. Uh, body puzzle. I've been wanting this for ages. Too long. Too long. But now I got it. I got the body puzzle on 88 films release. So, got that in my collection. Very happy to have it. Another Italian, uh, yeah, Italian pearl. And then, yeah, this, this, <laughs> uh, this uh, gore festival movie, Beyond the Darkness. Wii U Omega. I finally got the Yodi Amato movie Beyond the Darkness. And I, no, I didn't have it before. And also, it's been too many years that it's been too crazy expensive. So I'm way happier that I hold, held out and waited till I could get the Day Films Blu ray release. So that's fucking awesome. Finally got that one in my collection. Way, way happy with that. Way, way happy. That, well, that, that was one of the must haves, of course. So we'll put that on over there on the altar. Yeah, I picked up this used copy of Death Will Have Your Eyes on Blu-ray. Uh, I have never seen this one. This is brand new for me. So yeah, I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, Death Will Have Your Eyes. Yeah, man, I hope this is, will be, be a good one. Uh, yeah, I really hope so. I'll put that one over there and then oh man this one I love this movie uh, face of the stone wheel woman women uh, I love this movie this is a, a nice little hard box edition of it uh, it wasn't the edition that I initially was going to pick up but this I had problems finding out one and this came up and I was oh, okay why not it's the, it's totally uncut and it looks nice and the, and the transfer was all right, actually. So I'm very happy with this. I had a great time watching this uh, uh, some years back. I'll, I love this. I love this movie. This this was great. I, this is the sort of stuff that I really that I really like. This this makes my mind go to a certain place that I like to be in. <laughs> so uh, yeah, love that. That's a great pickup. I uh, picked up this. I actually I traded for this during town fair. So, uh, flesh eating mothers on 88 films Blu ray release. So, I traded for this. Uh, so, yeah, didn't cost me anything. Uh, the Atticus Institute, some sheepy that I traded for. And um, yeah, I picked up uh, the Divi Max uh, Anchor Bay edition of uh, Day of the Dead. So yeah, I need. Uh, yeah, I already have several other other, other editions of this one, <laughs> but I really wanted this this one. I always wanted this one, uh, and now I got it. So yeah, I collect different variations and editions of movies that I really love. You know, movies that I think are more than movies. Uh, but Day of the Dead, Your Shaw Ramirez masterpiece. All of those first three are. Fantastic, brilliant masterpieces. I love them. Uh, so, let's move on. Oh man, this is an old favorite of mine. 
But this has been really hard to track down on, on anything, VHS or even like DVD, specifically DVD. But I found this and I believe I traded for it. I don't I believe so. But I finally got the Roman Polanski, the tenant. Uh, and actually funny enough, after I picked this up, the Swedish this is this no, no, this is not the Swedish The Swedish edition came up as well uh, later on. Uh, but I already picked this one up, so I was happy with that one. But the tenant, masterpiece, one of Roman Polanski's best movies. Uh, and I really like most of his movies. I, that's one, he's one of my favorite directors of all time. He's up there. I love his movies and I love The Tenant. So I'm so happy to finally have this again. Uh, the Long Night. And why did I pick this one up? I picked it up because my favorite actor, Vincent Price, is in it. That's why I picked it up, baby. So yeah, Vincent Price, he's in it, The Long Night. Uh, I think this is a remake of a French movie. Yeah, that's a French thriller movie, and uh, yeah, Vincent Price, can't get enough of him, love him. Uh, Steve McQueen in Bullet, and uh, yeah, this is a good movie, and I haven't seen this in ages, but I really remember the titles and all of that, and uh, yeah, really good editing and such in this movie, but I'm looking forward to checking this out, even though I picked it up last summer, I've not had time to rewatch it yet, uh, so yeah, it's been a while, uh, Sheepy Morgan, uh, I don't know if this will be good or not, but it was cheap and, you know, whatever, I traded for it, uh, The Gift, another Sheepy, yes, I have not seen this one yet, so, but, but I will soon, uh, Exmoor, Sheepy, uh, yeah, X more. Uh, Shield of Straw. I actually this one I already seen. Uh, Takeshi Miki movie. Love Takeshi Miki. And this starts off very rough. I mean, it it really in the beginning it's like I had it. You know, I had it in my in my mind. This could possibly be the worst Takeshi Miki movie I've ever seen. This can actually be really bad because it starts off really bad, but. Fortunately, it turns the way the whole way around and becomes something really good. So this is not a good Takeshi Miki movie. I really enjoyed this one. This this was good. But first off, he did some weird, very weird choices in the beginning of this movie. Uh, some weird dramaturgical choices. But it it turned out all right. I like it. Uh, the last days picked this up cheap, I believe. Uh, yeah. Last day, have not seen this one yet. I think it's the Spanish movie. Yeah, it's a Spanish movie. Last days. So yeah. And then another one, Daylight's End. With Lance Hendrickson, among many others. Uh, I don't know if this is good or not, but I picked it up. Beauty and the Beast with Vincent Cassell. Vincent Cassell. Yeah. Not the fucking Disney one. French one, the good one, not the fucking boring Disney bullshit. Fuck Disney. Swiss Army Man, I really enjoyed this. This was a good fun ride. Really, really good fun ride. <laughs> Over the top and fun at parts, and really like ridiculous. But but I liked it. I really liked it. This is this this is a rewatch for me. I mean, you can watch this several times and enjoy it just as much, even if not even more. And now, oh my god, now I have something special. This is one of my new favorite movies. I love this movie. I, I And I'm going to pick up the Blu-ray eventually. I, I really need to have that. I love this. This is my, one of my top favorite movies now. Hunt for the Wilder People. This is so awesome. I mean, if you haven't seen this one, you must check it out. I, specifically, I recommend this for moods. So if you haven't checked this out, brother, you need to check this out. You you are going to enjoy it. That much I can say. How much I don't know, but I recommend this to you. I want you to read to <laughs> to watch it, <laughs> and then I want you to do a review of it. Or oh, just mention it to me how how what you thought of it. I really want to know. But check this out. Everyone that hasn't watched this movie, check this one out. Hunt for the Wilder People. Yeah, th I, this is good. This is really good. Really good. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Hunt for the Wilder People. I don't need to say any more than that. Watch it. Now. 
let's move on. Uh, a documentary about the, the 2080 comic books, uh, Judge Dredd and all of that. Uh, and I, I grew up loving Judge Dredd when Judge, the Judge Dredd comic came, came out in Sweden. I was all over it. I love it. I'm a big fan of Judge Dredd and such. So I picked this up. Uh, yeah, Future Shock, the story of 2080. Yeah, I'm, I haven't watched this yet. I, parts of it online, but not the whole thing. And let's move on. Blazing Saddles, Mel Brooks. I love Mel Brooks. So, yeah. I got Blazing Saddles. Uh, yeah, great comedy. Really good comedy. Really good comedy. So now I have something really special here. Something that I really needed in my collection. Now I already have this movie in several editions, but this was the editions that I the edition that I really really needed to have. This is one of my childhood favorite movies. This is one of my childhood uh, <clears throat> most important movies. And it's actually Puss in Boots. I saw this in the theater when I was a kid. We are talking way, way, way back. Very early 80s. Uh, and I love this movie. And now I got this. The Hem Video Film <laughs> edition of it. Hem Video. Rainbow release on VHS. And yeah, this is something special. Puss in Boots, the Toei, old Toei animation, key, key artwork by Hayao Miyazaki. This is one of the earlier, I mean, I was way early when it came to this stuff. Uh, and yeah, I love this movie. It's been a, like the Puss in Boots movie has been something in a family that has been very, yeah, I paid a little bit for it, but it was way worth it. Uh, but yeah, this is beautiful. This, this is beautiful. Big fat case. And yeah, beautiful release of Puss in Boots, the, 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 old, the old Swedish poster artwork, which I have this poster artwork, the big, big, big old Swedish movie po theater poster for Puss in Boots, the 2A animation. I love this movie, this is one of my favorite uh, animations. And yeah, old 2A goodness, and I'm so happy to have this in my anime VHS collection. Yeah, I can't tell you enough how much this meant to me picking this up. This this was like a mu must have in my life. I'm so happy to have this. You have no, no idea how much it means to me. No idea. Let me just say that I have several editions of this movie. DVD, several VHS tapes, uh, and I got the, the mini poster, the big theater poster. Well, I, I think you get the point. I love this movie and I love the good old 2A stuff, the 60s, the 70s. And even the 80s. But it, it was the 60s and 70s that I grew up watching. The 80s came later. Uh, you know. But uh, yeah. This is so important. Now let's move on. Yeah. One of my favorite directors. David Cronenberg. I got finally got the G GBE release. GB film release. <laughs> I have to say some Swedish words there. But I got a real legit Swedish VHS edition of it. Actually, uh, in the past, I had my Australian Australian release of it, big box VHS tape, and I had a, like a small box VHS tape. Uh, but I, this is the one that I wanted to have. Uh, there's also another one, that, but uh, yeah, I I got at least a more legit release of, uh, of Rabbi uh, Rabid on. Uh, VHS. <laughs> so yeah, David Cronenberg, classic, great movie. Rabbi, rabid, rabid. <laughs> yeah, fucking awesome. Uh, let us move on. Uh, Vincent Price, my favorite actor of all time. Yeah, I got the the VHS tape of. Um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, the All Blown Box, real nice, Walter release on VHS. Picked this up during Town Fair. All of these VHS down here I picked up during Town Fair. So this is beautiful. Beautiful big thick box. Good condition. The cover is all in good condition. And 
my favorite favorite actor and of course i need to have a whole bunch of i have a couple of these surprise tapes but not enough so i needed to have this looks really good so fucking awesome this is so great so let's go put it up there let's move on another one yeah a uh, cry of the banshee so yeah there is a sticker on it but i'm going to try to remove it i think but cry of the banshee looks really good another one that's off besides that there's a sticker that's been torn here but beyond that i think it looks really good uh yeah i'm i'm happy with it let's open it up and just have a look a uh, good old silver edition there yeah, but it looks good walter didio vincent price cry of the banshee let's put it up there with the other good one that's how we like it that's how we want it put some lotion on it yeah <laughs> okay the raven a little bit of a later release of the raven on swedish vhs but it's still it's with some price and this is awesome look at that cover look at that cover art vincent price and borderless karloff and peter lore jack nicholson yeah we got a whole bunch of Great actors. Yeah, let's move on. Uh, Vincent Price. Really put the lotion on them. Then one, another one of my favorite movies. I, I, I love this movie. Patrick. So happy to have this on VHS. Um, yeah, really need to have that one. Uh, yeah, I'll take a little. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Okay, let's continue on this madness! And first up we have actually a little bit of an upgrade. Used to have this tape, but uh, I got a small boxy version of this. Um, and yeah, I had a couple of different releases of Phenomena. I still have plenty of VHS tapes. Uh, like I said, I have the small box version of this still, but I don't have the big box version. I used to have it. Uh, I don't remember what happened to it. This is a long time ago. It was in the 90s I I, Did I trade it or did it get broken something like that? Uh, but I got a new edition of phenomena the old Tape that I used to have uh, So yeah Phenomena and, uh, and, and I'm actually not one of those that hates on this movie I'm actually one of those that enjoy and love this movie very much I always thought this was a really great Dario Argento movie uh, and I always liked it just as much as I liked uh, many of the other classics uh, some people don't seem to enjoy it as much but I do I love Phenomena I think it's a great movie and here we have uh, Cameron's Closet I ac might actually already have this but I was so unsure and this was a nice looking edition of it I do have the movie I do have it, uh, have it on DVD but I do believe that I have, have it on VHS, but I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure. It could be that I was thinking about buying it, or I placed an order, then I... Whatever, you know how things go, and it becomes hard to remember a, a couple of instances. <laughs> it's rare, but it happens. It's very, very rare. I remember most of my movies, even though they are... In the several, 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 several times thousand, uh, I do remember most of them. But sometimes, when they have several editions, you have them on DVD and Blu-ray or whatever. Then you have a hard time remembering. Sometimes, if you had it on VHS or if you just had it on DVD, and like I said, it's not a huge problem. It doesn't happen that often. But I could be already uh, having this this one in my collection. But whatever, this is a nice release, the original case and whatever. So I'm happy to have it, and like I say, I'm on sword and I might not have it on VHS. I had it in my mind that I sh should have it, but anyway, Cameron's Classic, excellent movie, I love this movie. Good, good, good horror movie. Good supernatural horror movie, psychic supernatural things. Uh, I recommend this one if you haven't seen Cameron's Closet and you like 80s horror. Uh, so the only Psycho edition... Uh, Edition in VHS uh, part that I didn't have, Psycho 4, uh, last one that I didn't have on SLT, my favorite label, uh, so fav favorite 
Favorite level, the yellow, yellow cases. So Psycho 4, got that one. So yeah, let's move on here. Uh, the fifth floor, like a mental hospital thing. Uh, yeah. Actually, Robert Englund is in this movie. I did not know that, but it appears that he is. It says so on the back here, and I read it online, but I, you know, I did not know that. Uh, but it claims to have him in it, so I, I hope he is. The fifth floor. Uh, yeah, the fifth floor. Uh, and another <laughs> mental asylum sort of thing. Uh, shock treatment. Uh, from VCL. Uh, yeah, shock treatment. So get that. Let's move in. Uh, <laughs> here's another one. Uh, Jack the Ripper is back. Terror at London Bridge. And uh, we have actually David Hasselhoff in this one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, was this a TV horror movie or what, what was it? I actually believe that I've seen this. I do remember parts from it. And, but it was some time ago. Uh, but I did not have this. And I need to relive it. But uh, Terror at London Bridge, nice Transworld release, uh, original case and everything. So I'm happy with that one. I think, even though it's not the best movie, <laughs> uh, Fright, uh, MDC, Fright. That well, looks cool. I never seen this one actually, so I have no idea how it is. Uh, Afraid it it has the original MDC case, gray with with the hat with has the engraving of the the label on it MDC. That's pretty cool. I like I like to have the original cases for the releases. This does not have an original MDC release, but it's uh, Death Hunter. Death Hunter. They're actually on an earlier release on scanned video of this movie. Which has a different cover of art, and I've been meaning. I think I probably will double dip on this one and get that as well. Uh, but uh, that, that Hunter, uh, this is like a western slasher horror movie, from what I remember. Uh, yeah, Death Hunter. So Death Hunter. Uh, let's move on. Hunter's Blood. Yeah, Hunter's Blood MDC it has the original MDC case as well. I'm not gonna open it, but it is the original. So Hunter's Blood. Happy to have that one. Uh, yeah, Hunter's Blood. Then an old favorite. Oh man, I have good I have good memories from this one. Watching when it came out on Rental VHS, watching it at the theater. You know, I remember I I got a huge pot of boiling water over me when I was a kid and I was home having these blisters and it hurt like hell, I was really sick and uh, and I watched Dark, The Dark Crystal <laughs> laying there uh, in the sofa with, with those burns, those blisters and watching The Dark Crystal, <laughs> so I will never forget that, I always remember that, and it wasn't all bad, you know. Because the Dark Crystal made it all better. Jim Hansen magic. Some Jim Hansen magic. Uh, yeah. So I got that one. One that should have been in my VHS collection. Uh, yeah. So yeah, let's move on here. Oh, one of my favorite movies. Terry Gilliam, Brazil. Oh, this is a great movie. But I needed to have it on VHS. So and uh, now, now I got it. Picked it up last year. So. During Town Fair. So... Oh, I love this movie. This movie is great. Oh, man. This movie is great. Good times watching this in the 80s. Brazil. Terry Gilliam. Oh, man. He was great. Terry Gilliam. Also another favorite director of mine. Big influence. Absolutely. Hands down. Uh, Young Warriors. Uh, watched this a long time ago, but I don't remember how it really that much from it. Uh, a couple of pieces. But Young Warriors, the same with this one. No, it's not here. Okay, oh, get down. Oh, but it is the same. This is one that I picked up during the 80s. Me and my father went to the rental store and I was going to pick out uh, a movie. And I went for this because it looked like a total Indiana Jones ripoff with a cool ass cover. I mean, look at this cover. That's why I got this again because I remember this cover from the 80s when it, 
it like it shines like this this is awesome look that is amazing and i still think it's just as great as when i saw it as a kid i picked this movie but i had no idea how it was and uh, that it was really yeah it was an indiana jones knockoff but it was really a little bit more adult because i believe there was a lot of uh, well naked breasts bouncing around <laughs> but uh, let me just say this i didn't complain <laughs> i did not complain <laughs> but i think um, maybe my parents thought that there wouldn't be as much nudity in it but whatever <laughs> i remember this one i picked it out and i love this release this was one that i just ha had to have because i got fond memories of this Branding it back in the day. This is an Indiana Jones knockoff Italian. Uh, I believe it was Italian. Uh, the Mines of Kinwanyaro. Uh, yeah, but a beautiful release. Look at that. This is why I love VHS. I mean, look at that. Still fucking amazing. Still amazing. Yeah, man, I mean, this VHS is a treasure. Uh, the, the, just the case and the artwork and it's a better treasure than the movie. <laughs> the movie is alright, but but really the the, the VHS edition is what is interesting. Let's move on here. Uh, by the River's Edge, uh, Keanu Reeves movie. Uh, uh, Dennis Hopper, really good one. I haven't watched this in ages, but you know how to have the VHS tape. Uh, yeah, had to have the VHS tape. By the River's Edge. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, uh, Tough Turf. Let's, tough Turf. I, yeah, I watched this a long time ago, but I don't remember much. Well, isn't this a bad neighborhood sort of thing and, you know, gangs and whatever. I don't really remember much. Uh, but it's, this was a really good 80s movie from what I remember. Tough Turf. I uh, picked that one up as well. Uh, here we have Savage Dawn. This is another one that I remember watching. This is a good movie. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Lance Henriksen was in it. Yeah, those bikers sort of thing. They attacked this town and they totally destroyed. I believe it was a tank in this movie as well. Uh, yeah, Savage Dawn, one that I, that I had to have on VHS. So let's move on here. Uh, the original Rambo, First Blood. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit disappointed with this pickup because it's not a, the original cover. It's a copy, and it's inside. We have a another. It's not the VTC case, it's another other tape. It's not the VTC tape, it's uh, another tape. So that's a little bit disappointing, but whatever. Rambo First Blood, and the, sec the same thing goes for this one. Not the original tape in it, uh, and it's not the VTC original cover. So let's move on, Rambo 2, uh, First Blood. But here we go, man, this is all original. All original cover, original tape and everything. The VTC of Police Story, one of my favorite Jackie Chan tapes. My favorite Jackie Chan movie, I love Police Story. Man, what a great movie it is. And the stunts, oh man, these are some, some of his best stunts in this movie. Hands down, hands down. Okay, the front label is gone, but the side label is there. So, whatever. Uh, it, is, it, it is the original tape and everything, so there's no problem there. Uh, but Police Story, happy to have this. I love Jackie Chan. I was a big Jackie Chan fan when I was younger. Uh, and I still, I still like those old Jackie Chan movies and such. So, Careless Heroes, need to remove that fucking sticker here. But Careless Heroes and SLT release. So, let's move on here. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Magnificent Seven, the first one on, on Black Warner Brothers. And I collect Black Warner Brothers tapes. So, Yul Brenner, Eli Wallace, Steve McQueen, and you know, a whole bunch of others. Charles Bronson. And, well, really good. I like this mo these movies. Uh, also have the second one on, on VHS, but it's a later Warner release. So, but I mean, they are ma ma magnificent seven. So let's move on. And here I have another another edition of Blazing Saddles, but on Black Warner Brothers tape. Uh, the Mel Brooks Blazing Saddles. So I picked it up on v uh, on DVD and and on VHS. So I got both editions now. That's amazing. That's amazing. You know, really need to have it on. In my VHS collection. It's a must have. A must have for sure. And then let's move on here. Then we have uh, another tape, which is actually one of my favorite actors as well. Vince Surprise is miles and bounds ahead of him, but I always enjoyed Michael Keaton. <laughs> and uh, this is one movie that I, that I haven't, didn't have in my collection. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
but the original title I do not remember <laughs> actually I only you know the Swedish title I do remember what what is the original title Mr. Mom Mr. Mom yes it's called Mr. Mom uh, yeah but that's the last tape I picked tape I picked up <laughs> for uh, town fair but that's my town fair haul oh my god that's my town fair haul and I got more VHS tape got more stuff all over here as you see I get stuff over there there's the new stuff I'm it's going to be a little bit faded because I don't want to show it yet but I have oh, I have more to update more to update but that's it for me take care everybody bye